um, Daniel chapter 6 as we prepare to get into the word today. Um, there's some things I really want to talk about that's been on my heart and um, I hope that everybody is having a blessed day. Are y'all okay today? Alright, so were you able to make it out through the week? Did you have some, maybe had a little challenges, but yes. because you was able to push through, you you're able to make it through, amen? Yes. Would you say that, you know, because God is, he, he saved you and you're in your right mind, you're all right? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Where is my son? He went back to All right. Something. Okay. Okay. All right. So today, I want to start a series, and I've been, put it on social media a little bit as well. And uh, for the next few weeks, are y'all okay with this? I'm sure you are, but I heard from the Lord, so I'm, I'm, I'm just going to roll with it. But I want to talk about faithfulness. Faithfulness. All right, no problem. Faithfulness. Sorry, my nose won't stop bleeding. Sorry. Oh no, it's okay. You want us to pray for you? Yes, please. Okay, y'all. We, you know, that's that's what we hear. Let's, you know, get, give me some more tissue though. Get some more tissue. We get. And we, all you got to do is hold that head back. Hold your head back. So you won't. Uh, all right. See, because the enemy don't want you to hear this word, and I want you to hear this word. Y'all stretch your hands towards the woman of God. Here, grab this right here so you got some extra tissue. Thank you. So, Father, we bless you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Whatever the enemy is trying to hinder this woman of God from receiving the word today, we bind that up right now in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, Father God, just like the woman with the issue of blood that was bleeding for 12 years, she said if she can just touch the hem of Jesus' garment. So, Father, we thank you right now, Lord God, that she is seeking your face, Lord God. Lord God, that you drew her here today. So, Father, we bind up the enemy right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that she will be able to hear this word on today. Lord God, you allowed her to get out of her bed today and brought her to the house of the Lord. So, Satan, we bind you up right now in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you that her nose, Lord God, that everything lines up right now according to your will, that blood stops bleeding. So, Father, we bless you. You said whatsoever we ask the Father in the name of Jesus, Lord God, it shall be given unto us, but Lord God, to bring you glory. So, Father, we bless you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, and we rejoice in advance. Lord God, we rejoice right now in the signs, miracles, wonders, Lord God, that she is healed and not sick, and we come against anything, Lord God, that's not like you that's in her life. We bless her right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. You, you are king of King, Lord of Lords, the great I am. So, Father, we thank you that no weapons formed against us shall be able to prosper. We thank you that she's healed from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Father, we call it done. We rejoice in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You don't have to leave. You don't have to leave. Amen. Amen. Let's rejoice. Come on, God. No problem. Amen. Yes, absolutely. Here you go. Give you one of these right here. There you go. You're welcome. Fresh bottle of water. There you go. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So getting back, I want to talk for the next few weeks or so until the Lord changes us up, changes changes it up. I want to talk about faithfulness. Look at your name and say faithfulness. Faithfulness. So faithfulness is 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 very important. And I want us to understand that there are some things we tend to do being faithful, whether if it's good or bad. Have you been there? Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. So how many of people this morning understand in order to be faithful, to, to get a success in what God is trying to do in your life, it's going to cost you something? Yes. Yes. Amen? Are y'all all right? Yes. yes. All right, so today I want you to get to understand that it's not going to be easy, but the payoff is like no other as it pertains to the kingdom of God. So, right away, let's talk about this. Here, what are some things that comes to your mind when you think about the word faithfulness? Don't put it up there yet. What are some of the things that come to your mind when you think about faithfulness? Anybody? Loyalty. Loyalty. Okay, okay, good. Who else? Commitment. Commitment, okay. Who else? Let's jump it on out there. Commit, come on, faithfulness. What do you think about faithfulness? Trustworthy. Trustworthy, okay. What else? Steadfast. Steadfast. Love. Love. What else? Come on, y'all. Peace. Peace, okay. All right, let's put them out there, Teresa. They, it's <laughs> like I'm, I'm struggling trying to get them to think about faithfulness. So, all right, so think about the quality of being faithful, fidelity. 
So also, you got correctiveness. So when you're being faithful, you're trying to make sure that things are coming along. You're correcting some things. You're, you see some things out of line. You want to make sure that it's good. You want to take out, you know, because we, we often quote and say, you know, they say God says if you're faithful with a little bit, he'll bless you with much. So we got to be faithful with what God has given us. Amen? Amen. All right. So somebody hit it already. Loyalty. Right? Mm -hmm. But here's a good one. Authenticity. Authenticity. Because sometimes people are, are not authentic. They try to pretend like they are, but they but they really not. But if you really want to be faithful, when we think about the things of faithfulness, you got to be authentic. And then here we go, fortitude. So fortitude, committed, devoted. Man, these, these sound like some things that make some sense to you when you think about faithfulness. Dependable. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. How many of y'all are dependable? All right, I want to see the hands. I don't know. Because I'm like, okay, we should put, okay, I, every, okay, everybody put their hand, <laughs> Bree, Bree say, nah, not yet, he said, no, Pastor, no, I'm still working on that, okay, all right, so dependable, and here's a very important one, when it comes to, when we think about the body of Christ as a whole, we think about covenants, so in order to be in, in true relationship with God, if we're going to be faithful with him, we got to understand that there's a covenant that we have entered into, when we said yes to Jesus. So are y'all in agreement with me? Mm -hmm. All right. So here we go. There are a few things um, when we I want to get into this morning, but God is faithful to all of his promises. Do you agree? Yes. So if God has said it, you can take it to the bank. You can cash it. He can give you a blank check. He can give you a check that got some zeros, a whole bunch of zeros, maybe a nine in front of You know, sometimes we say a one. But let's put me a nine in front of that joint. Then I'll put a whole bunch of zeros. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. My bad. My bad. All right, so God is truly faithful to his promises. So when I think of faithful, we think about this. It'll be on the screen. Loyal. Hmm. Constant. Stench. Steadfast. So you have this all where you, you've got a resolute meaning, firm and adherence to whatever one owes allegiance. So you're going to be faithful to something that you, you feel like is important to you, right? So... For example, I, I use, I'll start out, I'll start out easy this morning because I don't want nobody to jump up and leave out. So, baby, let me look at you. So, when I think about this, when I think about your job, you're faithful, right? Most people are faithful to their job. They're, no, not all people because some people will say, well, shoot, Pastor, I show up for work late. What makes you think I'm going to show up for church on time? <laughs> and I'm like, that trips me out. Okay, can I, can I talk about that for a minute? Okay, so, because I've heard people say, y'all know me, y'all know me, I'm going to keep it 1,000, not just 100. But sometimes people will say, well, you know, I'm, I'm a little late for church, I'm late for work too. But come on, man, let them be late to pay your check. <laughs> There's going to be some, some, some problems, some, some repercussions, right? Mm -hmm. Let a joker say, let's say you, you're paying someone to cut your grass every week, and they, they show up, you've already paid them. And they show up, like, you pay them to cut your grass every Monday, but they show up on Tuesday. Are you going to keep on? Are you going to say something about that? Yeah. Be like, you're either going to say something or you're going to get a new yard, man, whatever the case may be. But see, we got to get to a place where we understand that we're, we have an allegiance to the things of God. So when we have an allegiance to the things of God, we want to do whatever we can to stay faithful to that, right? I, I know he's not going to mind me bringing this up. I love, um, I was talking to Mr. John last week, I think it was, and he was talking about how no matter what's going on in his life, he's still going to make time to come to the house of the Lord. You know, even if it's, you know, sometimes he may not feel as well, but if he's feeling fine, he's going to make sure he's here. Amen. And see, if we, as a, as a body of Christ, as a whole, to say, no matter what's going on, I'm going to fellowship with my brothers and sisters in the Lord. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to live a life that's pleasing unto God. I'm going to stick with the faithfulness that God has ordained for my life. Is that anybody this morning? Amen. Amen. All right, so here we go. Faithful implies unanswering, excuse me, unwavering, unswavering adherence to a person or a thing or to the oath or promise and by which the tie has um, was contracted. So if I say I'm going to, let's say, get a mortgage, if you don't pay make that payment every month, 
They're either going to, A, it's going to hit your credit report. Amen? Oh, man, y'all, that's okay. Y'all listening. That's cool. So they're either going to hit your credit report. They're either going to come and put a lock on your house. They're going to um, stop, you know, because sometimes we'll say, well, shoot, I'm going to let it build up. But eventually they won't even receive your payment if you haven't been faithful. They'll say, you know what? You've proven to us that we can't trust you. You, you. you can't keep your word. So take care. You mess around and come home one day from work and all your stuff outside. You'd be like, wait a minute. They didn't have a key. Oh, yes, they did. Your signature down at the bank. <laughs> all right. All right. Here we go. All right, so here we go. There's a couple of things I want to hit real quick. Number one, and talking about faithfulness still, steadfast in affection or allegiance. So if you're faithful to someone, for example, um, in a marriage, somebody, you know, somewhere in a form or fashion, we've all, not, I think not all of us, you know, not the youth yet, but some of us as adults, we've been married or, or been married before or plan on getting married. Amen. Amen. All right, all right. So, there, it says steadfast affection or allegiance. If you have a good relationship, with, whether it be with your husband, your wife, your children, you're going to be faithful. And despite of what they may act up sometimes, you're still going to be faithful to them. You're still going to take care of them, at least until they're 18. Come on. Uh, some of y'all want to keep them past 18, but I ain't, you know what I mean? <laughs> All right, now here we go. Firm number two, firm in adherence to the promises or the observance of duty. Number three, giving with strong assurance. Again, we're thinking about faithfulness. So a person can say, I can depend that that uh, if there's a project, let's say you guys have um, somebody who has a, a torn meniscus. You say, you know what? Mika, Teresa, you guys have shown yourself faithful. I'm not going to, uh, you know, then you got Manny, I forgot. Thank you for, you know, I was like, man, Manny, I don't want to leave you out, man. So you say, okay, but the one that, that may, let's say, may have been doing it quite some time, like when you, Teresa got my, my knee that time, say, you know what, I'm going to do, I'm, we're going to give, give Pastor Willie to Teresa because she's going to hurt him, but she's going to be faithful and can be consistent, but she's going to help him. Oh, uh, y'all ain't want to hear that. Kiss that. Sometimes you have to hurt sometimes. Come on, children. Sometimes, you know, them, them, them butt spankers, they hurt, but I'm helping you because I'm being faithful and taking care of you. Because I want you, I want to steer you in the right direction to keep you faithful to the things of God. The Bible says, raise the child up how he should go, and when he's oh, he should not depart from the faith. So I'm going to be faithful in disciplining you. I'm going to be faithful in feeding you, clothing you, taking care of you, all these different things. Because when it comes time for you to do it on your own, I've shown you the way. Amen. So here in the body of Christ, that's why a lot, of, not all, but there, there are a lot of men and women of God that are, are being faithful, showing up every week. They're saying, oh, you know what? I believe what God has called and ordained for me to do, so I'm going to study. I'm going to show myself approval. I'm going to hear from the things, hear from the Lord so I can be faithful. Because let me ask you guys, what would you do? Real, real, real talk. What would you do if I didn't show up on Sunday? I did, wasn't a rhetorical question. Um, okay. okay, and I say, yeah, yeah, I'm good, but uh, whew, I'm going to stay home today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, what, what do you do? Is Lady Chanel coming? <laughs> like, nah, she ain't coming today either. <laughs> no, I, yeah, see, this, this is a real question. What would you do if, if neither one of us, you know, Man, we decided the, the covers was feeling real good today. We're going to just sleep in today. Mika got keys. Teresa got keys. We, we're good. What would you do? <laughs> Some people would go somewhere else. Okay. All right, so what are you going to do? Come on, real talk. What are you going to do? No, go ahead. <laughs> you know, if, a, if, if you're the regular pastor or whatever and, and you're touching their heart and helping them grow spiritually and everything and then you're not here, they're like, man, I, I wish you were here. I, I, I feel so bad. Now what? Right. But what have I taught you guys? If I'm not here, what are you going to do? You're going to keep going. Yeah, because here's the thing. And, and I hate to put it like this, I'm no monkey, but I heard, I remember growing up, they said, one monkey don't stop the show. You remember that, Mom, you know, they used to say that. 
But at the end of the day, Jesus, he prepared, he was faithful with the 12. So he prepared the disciples for his absence. So because he prepared the disciples for his absence, they were able to move forward and do what he called, what, what God had ordained for them to do, right? Same thing in the body of Christ. We're teaching, we're, we're preparing you because, again, it, it, it's not about Willie or Simone, as y'all say, where is Simone coming? <laughs> but it's about God, right? So we want to train you up to prepare you. But see, here's the thing. A lot of churches all over the world, even the mega churches, people are absent because the faithfulness is dwindling. We'll come again. We'll come on Sunday. We'll come with special events, sometimes on Tuesdays. You know, we have our Tuesday Bible studies or whatever. But some people that say, man, pastor, you said something I don't like. I'm not coming back anymore. We got to be faithful. I don't have, you know, I, I remember, and I love using Teresa as an example because she's been here for quite some time. I don't have that option to just not show up. It wouldn't be right, for one. But let me ask you a question. Real talk, and I, I, need, a, I need some feedback, and I'm going to move on. I'm going to get into the word, I promise. What happens when you're not here? Are you missed? Right? Yeah. Yeah. But see, like you said, I love what you said. If I'm not here, you still move forward. And, and I, I would say that I would have to do the same. But I believe that we in the body of Christ, it's, it's time for us to get to a place where we say, you know what? I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to be faithful because I'm not, if I'm not there, I'm missed. If I'm not there, I'm not on... Like in the military, if you're not at a certain place, your your post, someone could get hurt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Number four, true to the facts, to a standard, or to an original, a faithful copy. And number five, superseded, full of faith. So so faithfulness, we're we're we're, we're full of faith. We should be. Because if we're full of faith, there's something that we believe in, we're adhering to, we're going to continue to step forth and do what it is that we believe in. Amen? Amen. All right, almost there. So faithfulness is a concept of an unfailing, remaining loyal to one or something and putting that loyalty into consistent practice regardless of an... Um, extenuating circumstance it may be exhibited by a husband or wife who is sexually exclusive exclusive to their wives and not you know in other relationships outside of their marriage wikipedia put it out there like that or whatever but again that's what the world is saying about faithfulness so in other words if i'm with something or someone well, i want to stick with it so when when trials and tribulations may come i'm going to stick with it so here we go. Should we, as children of God, be faithful to our God? Amen. Yeah. So let's say, let's starting today. Let's just say, starting today, you know, it comes on the screen. Um, President Trump comes out and say, no more praising God. All churches are closed. You better not get caught on um, serving Jesus or anything like that. What would you guys do? Would you still serve the Lord? Amen. You would? So what if he says, if we catch you um, uh, serving God or praying to your God, your head is going to be cut off. Are you still going to? Amen. Yeah. Amen. You just have to cut off the speaker outside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. I like that, Mr. John said we have to turn, take, turn the speaker off outside. That's what I'm talking about. But at the end of the day, Understand, as, as, as the young lady said right there, she said that it's coming a day where that's going to come. But see, God gave us an example. So now, let's get into Daniel chapter 6. And we're going to just go through Daniel chapter 6, hit a couple of scriptures, and we're going to go on. Because again, I know this is going to be a, quite a few weeks that we're going to talk about God's faithfulness. All right. 
So Daniel chapter 6, you should be already there. I told you guys about it already. You, you guys are there, right? Plus all the scriptures will be on the screen. All right, verse number 1. It said, it pleased Darius to appoint, to appoint 120 states, satraps to rule throughout the kingdom. He says, with three administrators over them, one who was Daniel, the satraps were made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss. Now Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by this, by excuse me, by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. So you would say that Daniel was appointed there because he was faithful, right? Yes. Okay, all right. So so when you're don't be surprised when God puts you in certain positions because you've been faithful. Because you've been faithful. You've been, been consistent in your, in your job. You've been consistent on being on time. You've been consistent on training others. You've been consistent in the body of Christ. And God is going to call you out. Trust me. He's going to call you out and say, okay, now, Beyonce, I want to put you as the head cashier because you've always exemplified. You were a great bagger, but now it's time to move you up. You know, and all those things will happen because, again, God's word would, would be a lie if he said if you're faithful with a little bit, he'll bless you with much. So if it wasn't true, that wouldn't happen. All right. Okay, so here we go. Verse number four. It said, at this administration, as uh, at this, the administrators and the state, the state traps. Now, let me make sure you understand what state traps are. They are principal governor in the ancient Persian Empire to, you know, any subordinates or local ruler. So that's what a state trap is. All right, so here we go. At this, the administrators and the state traps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel and his conduct governing affairs, but they were unable to do so. So there's some haters. You will see, you know, you got some people that's working side by side um, that they're hating on you. They're trying to find something wrong. Be like, oh, man, he can't always have it together. He always hollering about hallelujah. No, no, come on, man. Check it out. He said they could find no corruption with him, in him, because they because he was a trustworthy, he was trustworthy, neither corrupt nor neglect, negligent. So Daniel, would you say that Daniel was, was a... a taking care of the business. Yeah. All right, so you would say that Daniel was someone that, that was trustworthy, that they could trust that he would do what he was appointed to do. He was in his assignment, right? Yeah. Okay, number five, letter, um, verse five. Finally, these men said, we'll never find any basis for charges against this man, Daniel, unless it's something to do with the law of his God. Oh, man. So don't... <laughs> Don't be surprised when people are tripping on you because you love the Lord. Because, I mean, this is no, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. So if we see Daniel, he, his accusers, his peers are trying to say, oh, man, hey, this joker right here. We can't find nothing unless we try to trip him up about his God. Here we go. Here we go. So the administrators and the stirraps, the stay traps, went as a group to the king. So they came together. He said, may King Darius live forever. Trying to pump his head up. Be careful now. He said, the royal administrators, perfect steroids, advisors of the, and governors have all agreed that the king should issue uh, uh, that uh, edict to enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god, look, look at that, little g god, or a human being during the 30 days except to you, your majesty, shall be thrown into the den. I mean, the lion's den. Wait a minute. So they say, you know what? We can't catch Daniel slipping because he's he taking care of his family. He's paying his tithes. He's showing up to church on time. <laughs> he's at work or whatever the case. You know, I'm just paraphrasing. But at the end of the day, Daniel is faithful. Are we in agreement that Daniel is faithful? Yeah. All right, here we go. Verse 8. He said, now your majesty issued a decree and put it in writing so it cannot be altered. Conniving rascals. In accordance with the law of Medes, Persians, and could not be repealed. So they said, if you put it in writing, it's a done deal. Right? So is the word of God in writing? 
All right, so it's a done deal. Okay, all right, I want to make sure we get that. So King Darius put the decree in writing. Now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows were open towards Jerusalem three times a day. He got on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, big G God, just as he had done before. So, so he said, you know what? Ain't nobody going to stop me from loving my God. Nobody. So as a matter of fact, he went upstairs so everybody could see him. So some people may say, oh, well, he's being disobedient. You know, he has rule of people. Have, no, no, no. God ain't causing us to be disobedient if it's as uh, long as it's not contrary to his word. Okay. Because the allegiance, what we do for God will last. Um, man, what we do for man is just temporary. Are y'all with me? Yes. All right, here we go. He said, then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying, asking God for help. So they went to the king and spoke to him about the royal decree. Did you not publish the decree that during the next 30 days, anyone who prays to any God or human except you, except to you, your majesty, will be thrown into the lion's den? So it could be somebody close to you that's hating on you. It could be your family, it could be your peers, it could be the person in your neighborhood, whatever the case may be. Stay, fo stay focused on the things of God. Don't allow anybody to get you off track. No matter what kind of decree that's coming, because like she said, it is coming. Y'all know we, it's in Revelation, it said perilous times will come. So as we're preparing, we got to stay faithful, because when it comes, man, it's going to be rough. Amen. Amen. All right, so here we go. Them haters all right there, they're like, oh, no, he ain't supposed to be doing this. Then they said to the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you. Are they causing some discourse? They say, causing no attention to you, your majesty, or to the decree you put in writing. He still prays three times a day. So, I mean, is that our testimony? Can people say, you know what, I can go to to Teresa or Willie or John or Ralph or Beyonce, whoever, they're going to stick with it. No matter what's going on, they're going to be consistent. They're going to be prayerful. They're going to be faithful to the things of God. That ought to be the testimony as the body of Christ as a whole. We got to be faithful to the things of God. We got to not worry about what's going on around us because sometimes we'll allow the world's circumstances to shake us up. We don't need to allow that to happen. Amen. We got to remain faithful. Here we go. He says, when the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. He was determined to rescue Daniel and made every effort, every effort until sun, sundown to save him. Wait a minute. Black that out. So what you're saying is, because of your faithfulness, now the king made the decree. Are y'all getting this? See, the king is the one who made the decree. He said, you know, but see, he was coerced. He said, now anybody who tried to work, but do I dare believe that the king understand that Daniel was faithful? Do you believe that somewhere in his heart that he believed in Daniel's God? Yes. Okay, so if he believed in Daniel's God, because if he didn't, he would not have been trying to figure out a way, wait, man, how can I go back? I don't put this thing in writing. Oh, what? I'm, oh my God, I don't messed up. No, it's okay, Mr. King. King Darius, here we go, put it back up there. Verse 15, then the men went as a group to King Darius and said to him, remember your majesty that according to the law of Medes and the Persians, no decree or edict, that word edict means proclamation that the king issues can be changed. Now, wait a minute. How are they going to tell the king what he can and cannot change? <laughs> it's all right. Some people out there trying to run the king. The king need to be the king and stop being all soft. Here we go. Here we go. So the king gave the order, and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, may your God, whom you serve continually, rescue you. So did the king believe it? He was, he was a little concerned, but he was like, you know what? May your God rescue you. Verse 17, he said, a stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his own signet ring 
and with the ring has no, he said, with rings of his nobles, so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. So if he, he's sealing it, saying, hey, it's done. Nobody don't come in here and try to move it, but it's okay. Then the king returned to his place and spent night, spent the night without eating. So he was fasting and without any entertainment, passing in and praying and being brought to him anything, and he could not sleep. Wait a minute. So if the king made a decree, how is it that the king, if, if the king is the one who, who put things in place, and then he's worried, he's like, wait a minute, what's going on? He's like, man, Daniel, man, may your God help you, but man, I can't change it. Yes, you can. Sometimes we're going to get in situations where we need to change our mind if it's going to line up with the will of God. Uh, be faithful. Look at your neighbor and say, be faithful. Be faithful. All right, so here we go. Verse 19. It said, at the first light of dawn, the king went and wait. He said he got up and hurried to the lion's den. The king was like, man, oh, Daniel, I'm sorry, man. Let me hurry up. He said, when he came near the den, he called in anguish of the voice, Daniel! <laughs> Servant of the what? Living God. He said, God, he said, has God whom you serve continually been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, may the king, he said, may the king live forever. Come on, man. So, so because he was faithful to do what God has called him to do, come on, I don't know about y'all. I'm not getting in no lion's den. I know I got dominion over the lions and all of that. God has given me dominion. But just in case them jokers may be hungry, I'm not going to play with them. Here we go. He said, my God sent his angel and shut the mouths of the lion and they have not hurt me because I found I was found innocent in his sight, nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty. So Daniel has been faithful. So because God has allowed us to be faithful, he'll protect us from what's going on around us. Because think about it. I don't know about y'all, but like that out. I don't know about you guys, but I've had a best friend that was killed. Have any of y'all had any friends that, that was real close to you that died? I had a best My best friend got killed when I was, I think, 18 or 19 years old. Man, he went through some things. But I, oftentimes I, I say, God, you, 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 you have favor on my life. Even in the midst of my circumstances, God has found me faithful. Have, have, have you been faithful? Yes. Have you found you faithful? Now, some of your friends was doing some things you knew wasn't right, and your parents had taught you wasn't right, and you decided to say, you know what? I'm good. I'm going to go ahead. I'm, I'm. And then you find out later somebody got in an accident, somebody got shot, some the club got shot up, or whatever the case may be, and you say, well, God, thank you. He may even allow you to get in a certain situation where you almost was unto death, but he said, you know what? I got somebody like the, like he did with the, the angel. He said, I'm going to send the angels to close the mouths of the lions. Yes. Because God has found you faithful. Yeah. So faithfulness did not compromise his faith in delivering him from the cares of the enemy. So because you're faithful. God, if don't compromise your faith. I know you're like, hey, Pastor, we get it. No, well, uh, faith comes by hearing, not having heard. Faithfulness. So faithfulness, we can learn a lot from Daniel. When the craziness of life comes in, we can be sure that if we've suffered for the things of God, we can endure for the things of God. Amen. So even when the worst times come in, when it looks like your lives are, are about to are uh, catching all, nothing is looking like it's up. But if you remain faithful, I promise you that it things will change. The situation may change. We gotta assess. Just like when we take communion, we gotta take assessment of what's going on with us before we take the, the Lord's Supper into our body. So we gotta assess the situation. I think about, y'all know, and you know, we talked about a couple of weeks ago, but y'all know, I know some people don't like this because I'm in their division. Tampa Bay is number one in our division right now. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We're going to play the Panthers eventually. So, here's the thing. I stuck with Tampa Bay Buccaneers when we won one game. Now we're two and one, about to be three and one after today's game. But see, here's my point. I wasn't moved by when they were losing. I still remain a faithful fan. 
So when things are going crazy in your life, you don't give up and say, man, I only got $3 in my bank account. I ain't going to give nothing. No, man. You got to put that seed in the ground. Because I know, I know. You know, I think about the declaration. We make, we've been making this declaration of faith every Sunday. How many people, your, your finances have, have increased since you've been making it? Be, be honest with me. Since we've been making the declaration. My finances have increased. People have been sowing into the ministry more regularly since we started doing the declaration of faith every Sunday. Do you think we're going to stop doing that now? No. Oh, no. See, because we've added our faith to our words. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So we've been remained faithful. Despite if we see the people, because they're going to start showing up in here, and then we're going to have to move. Because eventually we're going to move. Oh, this is not the final resting place for Living Faith Fellowship Church. <laughs> Y'all should have screamed then, boy. Y'all should have yeah! This ain't the final resting place for Living Faith. Because I believe that. Huh? Amen. That's right in the name of Jesus. See, because I believe that God has a greater place for us. There's some people that have yet to meet up with us. There's some people that have yet to find out the dreams and goals to manifest in their lives. But we got to remain faithful in the midst of going through things, especially when we're sick in our body. We still got to remain faithful. We got to be mindful of what we put in our body. We got to exercise. We got to Turn away some things. We've got to get out and walk, drink more water than soda, whatever the case may be, because God has given us one body. All right? So we got to make sure that we're going to trust him and remain faithful. Picking back up in verse 23. He said the king was overjoyed. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Think about this. The king was, was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the lion's den. So the very person that put you in there could be the very person that lifts you out. Mm. He, said, he said he was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wounds was found on him. He, it, because, he what had trust, he, because he had trusted in his God. So verse 24, it says, And the king's command... The men who falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den along with their wives and children. Amen. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. So, so people got to be careful when they're putting their mouths on us. They got to be careful when they're plotting against us to kill us because they don't know they're bringing damnation upon their family. He said right here, he said, not, he said, he said, bring his, the, their wives and children. And before they reached the floor of the den, the, the, the lions overpowered them and crushed their bones. Wait a minute. They had an opportunity to tear Daniel up and they didn't even mess with him. Matter of fact, in certain versions, they said that, that Daniel laid on them, used them as a pillow. But the daggone enemy got ate up so much, they didn't even hit the floor. They joke and say, oh, no. He said, oh, not only are we going to get you, but we're going to get your wives and your children because we're going to wipe you out. So anytime the enemy is trying to mess with you, you need to let them know you better leave me alone. You better leave me alone. See, my Bible says no weapons formed against me shall be able to prosper. But he said, he said, but be careful. He said, touch not my prophet, do him no harm. Amen. So we got to make sure that we understand who we are because if we don't understand who we are and, and we'll cause ourselves not to be faithful in the things of God, understanding that God has got us. Amen. I don't care what's going on in our lives. God has got us. He's protecting us. So even when the lion is trying to mess with us, he'll allow us to go to sleep on them jokers. Amen. Come on, y'all. So here we go. Oh, Jesus, this is good to me. I don't know if it's good to you, but it's good to me. Verse 25, it said, that King Darius wrote to all the nations and the people in every language in the earth, may you prosper greatly. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the big G God of Daniel. Amen. So, so, so God has changed. He'll change the heart of the king. So I'm not to say that our president or anybody is the king because we don't have any king. But I tell you what, there's some people that are in leadership that we don't always agree with. But I dare you to stay focused on the things of God. Stay faithful and trust God because God, he told us that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. So here we go. For he is the living God 
and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. He said, and his dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He said, he performs signs and wonders in the heavens and in earth. He rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. Now, this is the king talking. He says, so Daniel prepared, excuse me, Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and reigned in Cyrus and Persia and Persia. So here we go. So now we know that the that God will repay those who have tried to bring harm upon the people in the name of Jesus. So we're coming. We're not even coming in our own. All right. So when we're coming in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, he got us. So anytime, oh God, I'm going to put it out there. My children, my children, they know, they know their daddy, they know their daddy's something else. Amen? Can I get an amen, children? Amen. Okay, thank you, sir. Amen. You tell the truth. That's right, son. You can black that out, Teresa. So here's the thing. I'm not going to just stand by and watch anybody harm my children. Now, I'm a natural father. How much more then is our heavenly father, because we're his children, is just going to stand by and let the enemy just harm us? Amen. Come on. Amen, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I tell my children all the time, I don't, I don't uh, apologize for being tough on you, because I love you. And I'm not going to allow anybody else to hurt or harm me. So you got to understand when our parents are rough and tough sometimes, oh, God, it don't always feel good. But we know, we know that their best interest as their heart, as it relates to us. So when God said be faithful, he already knows what's going to transpire in the end. He said, if you be faithful, y'all hear me say it all the time, you be faithful with a little bit, he'll bless you with much. How many times, Teresa, Mika, have we come in here and it's just us? And y'all heard me say, you're going to hear me say it over and over. But then there's times we come in here, we had to pull out chairs, we had to pull out things on the back, different things like that. We had to spend time doing extra because we spoke it and it came to pass. So we didn't get moved when it was just a few people showing up for prayer service. We say, you know what, Lord, okay. He say, well, two or three are gathered together, there you are in the midst. So, Lord God, you're here. Lord, just me, you, and the Holy Spirit, we're here. Because I'm, I'm telling you, God wants us to be faithful. So our mission is to remain faithful even in the midst of all of our circumstances. Even when others have turned their backs on us and left us in the cold, we got to remain faithful. Because some people are not going to be able to get with you. He says your faithfulness will take you into places you never thought could ever, you could ever achieve. He said, Ev, you can even think or imagine. Some of the situations came in, in your life to kill you. Amen. He's come there to try. Some of us, I don't know who it is. It could be anybody in this room or somebody watching. Their parents went to the place to, to abort them. Right. But God was like, no. Thank you, Lord. I already knew the plans that I had for you. You might say, well, no, man, Pastor, that ain't me. You don't never know who it is. But when you stay faithful, when your friends called your names and, and turned their backs on you, the people who you thought was your road dog, God said, you just trust me. Remain faithful. I got you. Because I tell you, some of the people that say that they got your back, they don't. <laughs> they ain't got you. Some of the people that are talking about you, Smiling in your face, stabbing you in your back. Y'all remember that song, Backstabber? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Backstab. Oh, I don't want none of y'all to you know, backslide. <laughs> but we got to stay faithful. The Bible tells us in Matthew 5 and 6, it says this, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. It's up on the screen. So how many of y'all uh, are hungry for the things of God? Amen. Amen. So it says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. So we should never be in a place for, if we're hungering and thirst after righteousness, we've got to remain faithful and understand that even when we're going through trials and tribulations, we've got to stay faithful. 
We got to read our word. When nobody else, when we're not in here, we still got to study the word. We still got to read our word. We still got to allow it to be in our spirit. If God has told us to do something, do it. Amen. I was talking to uh, Minister Tracy yesterday, and he really blessed me. I'm going to have to make some shifts. I said that I was going to do this anyway, and it was real it was confirmation. He said that uh, he was talking with an elder, and he said that he carries like $1,000 sometimes in his wallet or uh, $600 or different things like that or whatever. And he doesn't carry it for him just so he can have it. He said he carries it so he can be a blessing to people. See, because he understands giving. He understands he got to take it to the next level. He's been faithful. He's shown himself faithful. They, they don't have a mortgage anymore. They sold their house, made quite a few dollars. On their, on their stuff or whatever because they're able to buy houses, cars, land, whatever the case, cash. How many of us, should, should we be able to do that? Yes. yes. <laughs> Come on. Yes. We shouldn't have to so go to the bank and say, oh man, I ain't gonna... Yeah, can I get the 6.5 interest? You'd be like, man, 6.5? Are you crazy? I'm like, well, you haven't been faithful. Your credit score is at 500, so we can't trust you. Anybody? Y'all listening? <laughs> but God said, if you're faithful, he'll bless you with much. Amen. And it's not that we can say, oh, I got all of this money and I got all of this stuff or whatever. No. I gave away a couple of weeks ago, I gave away my favorite necklace. Gave it away. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I gave that thing away. It meant something to me. But it said, wear it like a loose garment. And trust me, I've had that necklace for about going on five years. Love that necklace. But I gave it to someone. And I showed them and I told them that I love them. I said, I give it to you because it means something to me. So we should be able to get to a place when, when we give some things away that mean something to us. Not some stuff, well, I don't use this no more anyway. I'm just giving it away. No, something that means something to you. Because when you give it away... It's in great shape because you've been faithful with it. I'm giving cars away. We've given cars away. We've done things because not to sit up here and brag. No, I'm just bragging on God. Amen. Because if I'm a representative of my Heavenly Father, I should be able to help somebody pay their mortgage or their rent. I ain't talking about from the church money. <laughs> talking about from my own personal money. See, because the thing about it is, when we stand up and do the declarations every week or whatever, it's not because I want you, I want, and y'all heard me say this, hear my heart, it's not that I'm trying to take anything from you. But if the Bible says, give it, it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Amen. We should have a, an abundance. Amen. So if we're going to get to a place where we're going to say, okay, God, I'm faithful because I do hunger and thirst after righteousness, but it says I shall be filled. Lord, fill my bank account so I can empty it out and fill it up again because it's a constant thing. All right? See, not making the money, my God. Amen? amen. amen. Oh, y'all was a little quiet with that one. Y'all should have said yes, amen. But I'm just saying, not making money, our God. God has said he's given us dominion over everything. Everything. So if God has given us dominion over everything that creep on the earth or whatever, money, we should be able to say, you know what? Okay, I got it. Money is, is coming because I put seed in the ground, Kenan. Because I put it in there. I'm able to give it away, Julia. Because if I'm able to give it away, it's going to come back. Amen. 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 So if I, oh, thank you, babe. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Blame my, my wife got it. Thank you, babe. I'm glad you got it, babe. No, I'm playing, I'm playing. I know everybody got it. Amen. Y'all all got that. Excuse me, Pastor. Yes. When you, um, how do you say, you give to somebody or whatever, uh -huh. it, it's not about always the, the financial return. That's right. Money. It could be saving your kids. That's right. It Come on. It could be getting your, on. your people to yes. tenants. That's right. You know, and saving your family from big from accidents hell. Or, or anything. Yes. It's not about the money return. That's right. See, because he here's the thing. It, that's, that's only one part of it. You're right. See, because um, um, uh, Gabrielle is believing God for, I think, a, 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 a pro or something, iPad pro, whatever it is. Something. She likes stuff. 
Okay, I'll use Beyonce. No, Gabrielle. I'll use Gabrielle. Gabrielle wants to go to Paris. And we're going. We're going. When, when God sees fit, we're going. But here's the thing. Her godfather told her you need to be able to sow into something. Sow into where you're trying to go. If you believe in God for something, sow a seed. My wife over there like, put it right here. <laughs> but see, here's the thing. Because we've been faithful, our children will be able to reap the harvest. Amen. See, think about it. When we're going back to that story with Daniel, because those, those guys was plotting against the man of God, the wives and the children got ate up. So don't you think on the flip side, if we're doing right, that our children are going to reap the benefits for us doing right? Come on, our generations, our children, our great-grandchildren. Man, Kenny, your kids are going to be blessed just because your mama was doing right. And your kids' kids are going to do what they need to do because you're doing right. Come on, man. Come on, Teresa. Because you say, you know what, I'm not going to, going to give up because I wasn't raised like this. Pastor, I'm going to serve God. So all your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren are going to serve the Lord. Because you say, you know what? <laughs> Generational curse is bound. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. One more thing. Come on. I, I have a, a testimony. My right. youngest daughter was in the Army. Uh -huh. She went to one, two tours in, in uh, Iraq mm -hmm. and one in Afghanistan. And with the chemicals over there, mm -hmm. she she was pregnant. She almost lost my grandson. Wow. And I was praying and thank God. Come on, come on. Thing. Yes, and she came home alive. Yes. Even though she had, she's has problems internally or whatever, but God brought her home. Yes. And brought her back alive. Yes. And my grandbaby. Yes, see, come on, y'all. We got to give God praise for that. See? It, it, it ain't all about the money return. Come on. See there? See, because you sowed a seed into faithfulness. Because, see here, your faithfulness will cause you to be filled with righteousness, virtue, blessings, and other things that you can't even handle. But, see, the anointing of your life, God wants us to just to walk in the anointing. So I come to tell you this morning, don't run away from what God has allowed you to walk into. Amen? Amen. So you have heard me say it over and over and over again. God says, and it will be on the screen, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to me. John 12 and 32. So God has let us know if he be lifted up, right? So if we're being, it, oh man, she just gave God the glory because God is getting the glory, not her. She didn't say, oh, because I prayed and I did. No, because I lifted up God and I petitioned my father. So man, we got to get to a place where we stay faithful. Don't worry about what's happening around us, y'all. We got to be faithful, Bree. So here we go as I prepare to close. What do you do when the bottom falls out on your career or your family security, your health? What do you do when things are horribly wrong? Though you don't like anything about what's going on and you don't understand what is happening, what do you do? Believers, we're not to be insulted from the life crisis. We're to live in a fallen world, but understand that God is in control. So in Daniel's response to collapse in his own circumstance, he didn't. When we learn about his faithfulness, God looks when we are at the bottom, but he still is taking care of us and he'll bring us up. Amen. Amen. So our faithfulness to the plan of God through Jesus Christ is to draw people to Jesus, not to us. We just happen to be able to reap the benefits of the harvest of his love, his power, his grace, so that we can leave you, leave you with a question. What can you be more faithful in this week? Can you be more faithful in your prayer time? Can you be more faithful in spending more time with your family? Can you be more faithful in coming to worship? Can you be more faithful in sowing into the kingdom with your tithes and offerings? Getting up on time? Loving that person that you can't stand? Mm. <laughs> Even better, exercising. Spending more time watching what God will do in your life. Because God said if you're faithful, with a little bit. He'll bless you with much. 
So we can wipe out some of these, these cancers, and sugar diabetes, and high blood pressure, all of these, these things, because we got to be faithful what we put in our body. What are we allowing into our spirit? What are we dreaming about at night that's not of God? <laughs> because we put some things in our spirit. But protect what God has given you. So, last but not least, as you stand to your feet this morning. God wants us to be faithful. We've learned that God is a jealous God. But he wants us to remain focused on him and his will for our lives. That he has ordained for our lives. Let's lift your hands right where you are and let's go to the Lord in prayer. So I knew you was in the spirit, Mika. <laughs> oh God, we bless you today. Oh God, we thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord, we bless you, Lord God, that we will continue to be faithful in what you have caused for our lives, Lord God. Father God, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, for everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord God. If there's anything in our lives, Lord God, that's not pleasing unto you, Father God, we surrender it unto you right now. But Father God, we want our lives to be pleasing unto you. So even when the cares of life may try to come, Lord God, we, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, that we can reach our hands up Lord God, as a sign of surrender, but Lord God, also as a sign of just wanting to be held by you, Father. So, Father God, have your way in our lives, Lord. Forgive us, Lord God, for anything that we've done, said, thought, Lord God, that's not like you. But, Father, we bless you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, that we will be faithful. Lord God, faith, be faithful with our families, Lord God. Faithful, Lord God, on our jobs, our careers, Lord God. Faithful with our bodies, Lord God. Faithful, Lord God, in paying our bills, Lord God. Whatever, Lord God, we will be faithful, Lord God, in paying our taxes, everything, Lord God, we will be faithful. So, Father God, we thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Anytime that they try to find something wrong, Lord God, that they can only try to come to you and try to trip us up. But, Father, just like Daniel, when the enemy tried to come against him and cause his demise, Father, we bless you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, that our enemies will be the ones consumed. Father God, you said bless those that curse us. So, Father, we pray, Lord God, before they even try to come up against us, Lord God, that you will change their hearts like you changed King Darius' heart, and he realized he made a mistake. So, Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord God. You've given us an opportunity to repent. So, Father, we bless you right now that we understand, Lord God, we're the church, Lord God, and not the people, I mean, not the building, but, Father God, the people are the church. Father God, we're one body, Lord God. You said, Lord God, if we confess with our mouths, Lord, and believe in our heart that the Lord, that God raised Jesus from the dead, we shall be saved. So, Father, we bless you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, for every person under the sound of my voice. Lord God, that we have surrendered unto you. If there's anybody in this place today that haven't said yes to Jesus, Lord God, I thank you, Lord, that they will meet me at this altar. If you haven't surrendered your life to Jesus, rather if you're inside here or outside listening on the speaker, surrender to Jesus right now. Tomorrow is not promised. You find yourself faithful in everything else. Find yourself faithful in the things of God. So, Father, we bless you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that we have surrendered our lives to you, Father. If you came back right now, Lord God, if you parted the sky right now, Lord God, we will all be with you, Lord. 
Father, you said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So, Father, we bless you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. I speak blessings, Lord God, upon this house, Lord God. I speak blessings upon everyone in here, their families, Lord God, their children, their children's children, their brothers, their sisters, their aunts, their uncles, their cousins, their friends, their mothers, their fathers, their grandparents, Lord God. Generational blessings, Lord God. We come against generational curses right now in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Father, have your way. Have your way in our lives, Lord God, like never before. So, Father, we thank you right now for you are King of King, Lord of Lords, the great I am. Thank you, God, for you are God and God alone. So, Father, we bless you. We lift you up, Lord God. Have your way in our lives, Lord God. Father God, we thank you, Lord God. We will no longer have a poverty mentality. Lord God, we won't have a sick and shut-in mentality. Lord God, that we will be faithful in our witness as ambassadors for Christ. Lord God, we will invite people out to worship with us. Lord God, but only, Lord God, Lord God, only for your glory. Father God, that you will be glorified. Lord, we saw it, Lord God, in your word today, Lord God, if you be lifted up, you will draw all men unto you. So, Father, we bless you today. Have your way in our lives, Lord God, in our children and our children's children. So, Father, we bless you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. For you are King of kings, Lord of lords, the great I am. So, Father God, thank you right now. Father, you are worthy, Lord God, to be praised. Lord God, we bless your name today. We bless you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, you are worthy, Lord God. You are worthy. Hallelujah. Father God, have your fresh anointing upon each and every one of us, Lord God. I come against the spirit of offense right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Satan, you are a liar. And God, Lord God, you are king of kings, Lord of lords, the great I am. And Father, we worship you. Lord God, you said it, Lord God, in John, Lord God, you said the only way to the Father is is through Jesus Christ. So Father God, we don't put any other gods before you. Lord God, we only come through Jesus Christ to worship you. So, Father, we are unashamed of the gospel. Unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, that we're prospering in everything. In our minds, our souls, our spirit, Lord God, our children are doing great. Satan, you can't have our children. Satan, you can't have our lives. You are a liar. You're defeated. So, Father, we thank you. You said greater is in us than he who's in the world. So, Father, we thank you that greatness is in us, Lord, that we're royalty in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Father, we bless you today. Lord God, that we pressed out to the house of the Lord today. We pray, Lord God, for those who are watching online right now. Lord God, those who couldn't come, Lord God, because they're not feeling well. So, Lord God, we speak healing upon them right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. You said by his stripes we were healed. So, Father, we thank you, Father, for the healing right now. Lord God, we declare it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, bless your name today. Father, we bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Father, we praise you today. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, God. Bless your name, God. So, Father God, you are worthy to be praised, Lord God. Thank you, Father, for your anointing, Lord God. Thank you, Father God, for you are King of Kings, the great I am, Father. So, Father God, we bless you today, and we thank you, Father God, that we can always trust that you are a faithful God. So, Father, we bless you. We honor you today. And, Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you would touch the hearts of your people. Father God, that we are moving forward. Lord, we declare right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, for our facilities debt-free, brand new facilities, or we can have our children's ministry, our youth ministry, Lord God, our singles ministry, our young adults, Lord God, Lord God, the elderly ministry, all the various things, Lord God, evangelism, Lord God, 
Lord God, the pastoral care, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we're able to, to be um, entrepreneurs, Lord God, an entrepreneur program, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for the kinesiology program, Lord God, that we have people in our ministry, Lord God, that can head that up, Lord, that we can pay them, Lord God, to do, Lord, what you have caused them to do, Lord God, for pro bono. But, Father, we thank you that we're able to pray, pay them, Lord God, with the benefits, with the health benefits, and all the different things, the 401k, whatever the case may be, Lord God. Lord God, all the things that we can train people to change a nation. Lord God, for your glory. Oh, Father God, you said despise not small beginnings. So, Father, we've been faithful. And we thank you, Father God. We call down the rain right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Husbands, godly husbands. Oh, God, that we thank you, Lord God, that they're yoking up with the, the women of God, the, the one woman, Lord God, that you have caused for them. We speak, Lord God, an anointed man of God for Teresa, an anointed man of God for Shamika, an anointed man of God for whomever else, Lord God, is believing God for a husband. But Father God, we know, Lord God, that that husband, Lord God, has to find them. You said he who finds a wife finds a good thing, Lord God, and obtain a favor from the Lord. So, Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And we pray, Lord God, for Mr. John. Lord God, we thank you, Lord, that you'll anoint his heart, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord, for his faithfulness, Lord God, his life, Lord God, that he's given, Lord God, for Miss Eva. And we thank you, Lord God, that she's in a resting place with you, Father. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. He continue to stay faithful, trusting you, walking in the favor of God. God, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for Mr. and Mrs. Taylor. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for their faithfulness in their marriage, Lord God, in their relationship with you, Lord God, raising up a generation, Lord God, who would trust you, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, Lord God, for everybody, Lord God, under the sound of my voice, Lord. We pray, Lord God, for Brother Alvin, Lord God, overseas, Lord God, while he's there, Lord God, that you continue to keep your anointing upon his life, Lord God, and upon his wife's life and his family's life, Lord God. Bless Renee, Lord God, bless her, Lord Lord God, with the wisdom, Lord God, to take care of her children in the absence of her man of God. I pray, Lord God, for Alvin's mom. Lord God, Lord, bless her, anoint her afresh. Thank you, Father, for the smooth transition. Lord God, how you brought her, Lord God, from Dallas to San Antonio. Continue to watch over her in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, for Brianna, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you anoint her afresh, Lord God. Prepare her for her husband. Prepare her husband for, for her, Lord God. That I thank you, Lord God, that he is a mighty man of God. Lord God, that he will be a blessing to her. Lord God, that their children will be healthy and strong. For Michaela, Lord God, bless her right now, Lord God. Lord God, cover her right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that you will bless her, Lord God, beyond measure. But Lord, I thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you protect her, Lord God, while she's preparing herself, Lord God, for you, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, that she continues to hunger and thirst after righteousness, Lord, and pray for DJ, Lord. Bless him right now like never before, Lord God. Show him, Lord God, who you are. Show him, Lord God, that you haven't left him. So, Father, we bless you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, for everybody in this place and all the children, Lord God, and bless them, our children, for Beyonce and Gabrielle and Isaiah. Bless their husbands and bless, their, and bless his wife. Lord God, bless their children. The generations are blessed. Lord God, we thank you right now, Lord, for every family, for Stephanie Remo, Lord God, Bless her and, and Cameron, Lord God. Watch over them, Lord God, as they're watching at home, Lord God. Bless them right, right now. Lord God, we thank you for our partners, Lord God. Those, Lord God, the widows, Lord God. For the Lions family, Lord God. For the Lyles family, Lord God. For the Post family, Lord God. For all those, Lord God, who counted it not robbery to be a part of what we're doing at Living Faith. Even if they're not here, but Father God, they're here. Lord God, I thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God, for Tracy, Minister Tracy and Shante Jackson, Lord God. Bless them, Lord, 
all the pastors, the leaders, all my brothers and sisters around the world. Lord God, bless them. Pastor Laku, Lord God, over in India, Lord God. I thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that we will support them in their ministries overseas, Lord God. Lord God, that we will help out them, Lord God. Lord God, the missions, Lord God, to go forth and do what you call them to do. And we thank you, Lord God, that we will enlarge our territory, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we will have other living faith fellowship churches, Lord God. Not just this one here in San Antonio. Bless Pastor Trey as he prepares to transition, Lord God, from overseas from Japan to Arizona, Lord God. Watch over his family, Lord God. Watch over him, Lord God. Everything that he touches shall prosper. And Father God, last but not least, Lord God, our bishop, Thank you, Father God, for him seeing something in Simone and I, Lord God, to birth us out, Lord God, to do what he has called us to do. So, Father, I thank you right now for all the pastors, the leaders, the preachers, the teachers, the sheep, everybody, Lord God, who has surrendered to Jesus. Oh, God, bless your name today. For you are King of kings, Lord of lords, the great I am. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And if you receive that today, let's give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, God, I thank you right now. We bless you, Jesus. Lord God, we won't get tired or weary, Lord God, in well-doing. You said we shall work if we say not. So, Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hug somebody before you take your seat and let them know that you love them. Hallelujah. <laughs>